హలో 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 సార్
Hello. Sir, now you are audible. Audible, na? Just a minute. So I I, I, I welcome Dr. Balaji to this session, first session of afternoon on the fourth day of faculty development program. I'm as a sorry that I could not connect because of network issues. Uh, Dr. Balaji is a very enthusiastic uh, scientist in the Center for Fuel Cell Technology, ERC Chennai. Uh, he has uh, completed his PhD in uh, CSIR SICRI, Central Electrochemical Research Institute, Karaguri, India, Tamil Nadu. He has also pursued his postdoctoral uh, research fellowship in Japan. He has uh, received uh, the Outstanding Scientist Award in the field of hydrogen energy technology from Venus International Foundation, Chennai in 2016. His uh, biographical uh, profile was selected and included in the 32nd edition of Marcus Wu's Wu in the world 2015. He has also received a cash prize award for the best paper on electroplating, electroplating and finishing in China in 2004. He filed two patents to his credit. He has also published 22 research papers in international journals, 12 conference papers and one book chapter. We are very much happy to invite and welcome Dr. Balaji uh, for giving us an expert lecture. Uh, over to Dr. Balaji. Welcome, sir. So, thank you, Professor Murugan. Thank you for the introductions. And yeah, actually, I'm uh, with your permission. I, I'm going for. I'm uh, taking a break for lunch. I'm not done uh, okay. okay, my lunch. Okay. So I'll okay. join after uh, 20 minutes. I'll okay. after uh, join 20 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to deliver a talk on this topic, especially for the FDP program. Uh, so uh, thank everybody. And uh, <coughs> just uh, uh, because it is an opportunity to share the, uh, because the topic which I am going to discuss is a bit away from the, uh, the fuel cells, because uh, uh, I think you last two couple of days you might have heard about the uh, and enriched with the knowledge about the fuel cell, especially all types of fuel cell and its applications. And in some of our earlier colleagues also uh, made our delivery lectures and I think we are enriched with the uh, thorough uh, update on the PM fuel cell technology and other related uh, system. Uh, so today, which I'm going to uh, discuss about is slightly deviate from the fuel cell topic. It's hydrogen generations. Uh, by is exactly the reverse of the uh, fuel cell. So hydrogen generation by electrolysis of water. So that is going to be a ultimate uh, aim of this uh, entire world to generate hydrogen as a green hydrogen. Then only this fuel cell and hydrogen system will become entirely green when you coupled with this uh, electrolysis process with uh, renewable energy sources. So so that is that is going to be uh, the ultimate. Uh, uh, aim of uh, every researchers to make it economic to also. Uh, yeah, so currently it is not uh, economic way of producing hydrogen, but uh, the, the the cost is always a man made problem. So hope uh, uh, this technology of uh, uh, generation of hydrogen, green hydrogen from the water is going to be a uh, yeah, critical play is going to be critical play a critical role in hydrogen energy technology development. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I've been involved in these activities for the past two decades. I mean, when I started my career in 1998-97, uh, uh, so when I was uh, working as a project staff in CSIR Sikri. So, so I have been working on this topic for the past two years, I mean, two decades. Uh, so, there was a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> technological development as well as the scientific aspects. So there are uh, in ERC also we are working on this kind of electrolysis process for generation of hydrogen. So my talk will cover almost entirely on this particular area and what we have carried out so far uh, and especially in this particular technology. So we will go into the uh, topic. So just a bandwidth purpose, I'm switch off my video. 
So I'm sharing my slides now. Is it visible my slides? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, the topic which we discuss, we are going to discuss about the electrolysis of uh, water uh, to generate green hydrogen. Um, uh, so, uh, so, so I am from ARSA. I think uh, you might have uh, heard about uh, ARSA and it's a role uh, in playing the overall materials development in this country. Uh, I don't want to get into that uh, kind of activities, what we are doing. So directly I'm coming to the uh, current topic of hydrogen productions and its present status globally. So when is, uh, so when we discuss about the need of hydrogen, especially for the fuel cell sectors, uh, we are looking for the uh, very cheap way of producing hydrogen. And so because that is going to be a, uh, um, a great redeeming step for the operation of fuel cells. OK, so so when compared with the other uh, power generating device. So if you use the fuel cell uh, for the power generation sector, so what is the, um, apart from the capex, what is the operating cost of the uh, system? So these, uh, so that will be determined by the cost of the hydrogen. So if you adopt, so the hydrogen is not available as such, so which we need to generate from hydrocarbon or water. So, uh, so, so apart from, to separate from these two sources, so what are the ways uh, are available and among those uh, technological, uh, uh, I mean, various technological availability, how we can able to produce hydrogen effectively with the lowest cost actually. So, uh, so actually now we are dealing with a more carbon system like fossil fuel based system. So when you want to switch over from the more carbon to no carbon, especially for the uh, fuel cell based route, uh, it takes a lot of time. So we need to have a some kind of intermediate stage where we need to live with the less carbon system. So the stepway adoption of uh, uh, hydrogen energy technology will be a, a good option uh, to enrich the uh, uh, green uh, environment. So now we are, so more carbon, less carbon and no carbon. So in that, uh, if you if you follow that kind of pathway, then it would be a, um, a really a good way for addressing the uh, need of hydrogen because hydrogen as I said we need to produce somewhere uh, actually. So uh, currently about 50% of the hydrogen currently is being produced with uh, methane. So about 48% uh, 48 to 50% of the uh, methane, I mean hydrogen is being produced from natural gas and about 30% is produced from partial oxidation of oil and 18% from cold gasifications. So uh, only 4% of the hydrogen in the globally it is being produced from water electrolysis uh, because of the uh, yeah, high energy intensive process. Though it is a green, uh, the amount of energy which you require to generate hydrogen from the water electrolysis, um, though it is a theoretically it is about 3 to 3.5 to 4 kilowatt hour per meter cube of hydrogen. So that is the theoretical energy requirement to produce one meter cube of hydrogen. But in practical case, so it will be around 5 to 7 unit of electricity uh, to produce 1 meter cube of hydrogen. So, uh, and this is only the uh, uh, production energy consumption. So you need to consider the storage before it is going to utilize in fuel cell. So in all together, if you want to use from that 1 meter cube of hydrogen, if you're using fuel cell, hardly you can generate 1 to 1.2 kilowatt of power. 
so the amount of energy which you need to spend hydrogen is more than the amount of energy which you are getting back from the fuel cell so there is a lot of uh, energy input gap between generation through water and utilization through fuel cells so uh, so that's why uh, the uh, it's a kind of energy intensive process it's cost it's not cost effective process that's why in globally the percentage of uh, green hydrogen production is only 4% and now people are trying to reduce the capex as well as apex of the system uh, by developing a novel materials and novel design and uh, kind of uh, electrolyte and all those things are coming to the matters in order to reduce the energy consumption for the electrolysis process so <clears throat> but the ultimate is going to be a uh, integration of this uh, uh, electrolysis process with a renewable energy source okay so that is called the um, that is the uh, hydrogen from natural gas is currently uh, is a competitive today but uh, the longer term the in renewable energy integrated electrolysis process is going to be a uh, it's a i mean uh, is going to be play a major role in hydrogen economy so so because the one of the advantage of this hydrogen production from the electrolysis process is can be easily integrated with the renewable energy sources so there are various pathway to generate hydrogen from the water by adopting thermolysis electrolysis and photolysis actually so these are the various way of getting hydrogen from the water by integrating the uh, electrolysis by integrating the system with a renewable energy source so the renewable energy can be stored in the form of hydrogen uh, by separating uh, from water uh, through thermolysis so the, the renewable energy being converted to heat energy and that is being used for, um, to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen so if you want to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen with a direct temperature it takes place at more higher temperature of 2000 degree celsius so in that temperature only it is possible to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen so there are many r and d stages still is going on uh, to reduce the operating temperature of the system Uh, so that uh, we can able to generate hydrogen by thermal by adapting this thermolysis route to generate hydrogen so second option is the kind of photolysis i mean biomass and conversions and hydrogen that one of the route that technology has been demonstrated um, uh, globally uh, like this this electrolysis technology is also is a well developed uh, and it has been demonstrated in various sectors and this technology has been though it is a been demonstrated but the hydrogen which is produced from the biomass may contain some kind of impure hydrogens so we need to adopt some kind of um, purification system and uh, the purity of hydrogen which is required for the fuel cell is 99.999% uh, 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 so that kind of purity uh, of hydrogen uh, is is a bit difficult in getting biomass route uh, but there are many challenges which are being currently addressed to purify the a biomass hydrogen which is derived from biomass and make it suitable for uh, especially for the pm fuel cell application actually so the another route is the photolysis it's a very good technology for uh, converting the hydrogen for converting the uh, water into hydrogen by direct sunlight uh, but uh, because the water is transparent so this the, though it sun has a enough energy to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen the water is transparent does not any absorbs any energy so there are materials which you need to uh, in, uh, introduce to absorb that uh, uh, sunlight and convert into photons and uh, using that to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen uh, is a good technology and there are material challenges in this because uh, we need to consider two factors in this one is band gap of the materials and second one is the stability of the materials I, actually so there are material which are uh, which have a enough uh, which have a required band gap of lower band gap but that materials may not be stable in aqueous medium but there are material which are stable in the aqueous medium but there does not have a, a lower band gap so these are the two technological hurdles people are facing to uh, develop a novel materials which should have uh, higher stability as well as the uh, i mean higher stability as far well as the um, uh, lower band gap in order to increase the conversion efficiency of photolysis and reach, reach to 10% so the department of energy has uh, text i mean has set the target of 
10% conversion efficiency in the photolysis route will be a technologically feasible. Uh, so uh, the people are working globally to develop a material and the system uh, which should demonstrate uh, to conversion efficiency of about 10%. I think uh, people are not achieved that target. There are many people working on and achieved about 6 to 7 percentage of uh, uh, conversion efficiency in the system level. There are few uh, literatures are available um, to higher conversion efficiency, but that too in absence level. So in that case, the electrolysis is a well technology is a well developed technology that has been demonstrated globally for the uh, generation of green hydrogen. So uh, the, the I mean the, the basic chemistry which I shown uh, for electrolysis is a typical uh, energy consumption uh, curve. Actually, if you see this, if you do electrolysis at room temperature, the minimum voltage requirement for the electrolysis is about 1.5. Though it is a 1.48, the practical case it will be 1.5 volt. The minimum energy the minimum voltage requirement to split the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen. So the hydrogen will be liberated at the cathode and the oxygen will be liberated at the anode. So, um, the, uh, so the half cell potential of hydrogen evolution and oxygen evolutions will vary depending on the pH. So if we carry out this electrolysis process in acidic medium, so according to this equation, the hydrogen evolution will take place at a 0 volt and rest of the 1.48 volt uh, is required to uh, gen, uh, to evolve oxygen at the anode. So uh, what I'm going to say, but in the case of if you carry out the same electrolysis process in an alkaline medium, the anodic potential will be about 0.4 and the cathodic potential will be about 0.8. So overall it comes to 1.23 to 1.48 volt. So uh, but the maximum energy consumption which is required, I mean uh, maximum over potential which we can um, uh, face it in electrolysis process at the anode side in case of acidic medium, but maximum over potential will take place at the cathode side in the case of alkaline medium. So in, in, on the whole, the overall energy consumption, I mean especially the voltage requirement for the electrolysis process is about 2 volt in practical case. So when you carry out this electrolysis process it, uh, with higher temperature, so you may require some less energy, electrical energy input to because you are giving some of the energy input in the form of uh, heat actually. So that, that's what this graph shows when you increase the temperature, operating temperature from room temperature to 600 degrees Celsius, you may be seeing that lower requirement of lower electrical potential. Uh, but uh, and and you see, see, so though it is a 1.5 volt in practical case, it will be around 2 to 2.2 volt because of the various losses encountered during electrolysis. That is activation, warming and the concentration, which are similar to the fuel cell. So there is kind of activation losses because of the electrocatalyst um, uh, materials, um, res uh, material uh, resistance and uh, ohmic. So the, the interface between electrode and electrolyte interface, which may offer some kind of a, a resistance, which will reflect in higher over potential. And when you operate the system at high current density, because especially in the electrolysis process, the rate of hydrogen production is dependent on uh, amount of applied DC current. So as, as, as long as you supply more amount of uh, potential in, or in terms of current and you will get more amount of hydrogen output. So when you operate the system at high current density, so the replenishment of water replenishment, it should be in the same rate. Uh, otherwise, you will end up with a concentration polarization. So considering the sums, um, all these uh, resistance which are offered by catalyst and the ohmic electro electrolyte interface and the concentration polarization. So the practical energy requirement, practical voltage requirement for the electrolysis process is about 2 volt actually. So and if you multiply with the current operating current, though we will end up with a higher energy consumption of 4 to I mean 5 to 7 kilowatt hour per meter cube of hydrogen. So it's a basically electrolysis electrochemical cell. So you need to have anode and cathode and electrolyte. So depending upon the type of electrolyte which we are using, it is being categorized into three different way. One is alkaline, one is acid, another is polymer electrolyte. These are both are same because in layman language, we can say this polymer electrolyte membrane is a kind of solid sulfuric acid. So the rest of the chemistries are um, same actually. And another one is solid oxide based electrolysis where you can carry out the oxide ion transport in the electrolyte because the oxide ion transport take place only at high temperature. So we need to operate the system at high temperature of 700 to 1000 degrees Celsius using some ceramic material based electrocatalyst 
at both anode and cathode as well as electrolyte. Hope I, you may have a, a necessitation on the solid oxide fuel cell based system. I, it is exactly reverse of the uh, solid oxide uh, fuel cell and there are uh, material challenges still people are facing on that. That's why this technology is not uh, matured enough to uh, penetrate the commercial market. So in all these cases, the hydrogen will be evolved at the cathode and the oxygen will be evolved at the anode. And one of the advantage of going with the alkaline based system is that uh, we can use uh, any uh, cost effective nickel based electro electrode material in both anode and cathode side. And in the case of uh, acid or especially the polyamyltrate membrane, we need to depend on the precious metal based electrocatalyst and expensive membrane, which is acting as a electrolyte as well as a separator. So which we'll, we'll see in the subsequent slide in detail. And if you see the state of development, this alkaline based electrolysis process is highly matured. Um, so, uh, so way back in 19, uh, uh, about 60, 70 years back, the electrolysis process begin with the alkaline medium. So the technologies has been well matured and it has been, we can find very commercial uh, key players are uh, in globally, they are available and they are making a very good system and uh, uh, it is reaches the commercial level. In the case of polymeritrate membrane based electrolysis process is reaching the commercial level. It's also a kind of mature technology only because of the cost effectiveness and uh, 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 some kind of sophistications uh, because of that actually. So it's yet to be reached the commercial level. But in the case of solid oxide, it's as I said, it's only in the uh, R&D level uh, because of the mater uh, material limitations, developments, material develop uh, development of material limitation, material development, which will reflect in system development. There are many, um, I mean, if you see that uh, capacity wise, uh, the solid oxide based electrolyzer, it's not reaching in megawatt level. It's about 1 to 1 1.5 nm cube per hour that has been uh, demonstrated globally. And uh, in the case of PEM, see, so it has been demonstrated up to 220 nm cube per hour capacity. And in the case of alkaline, it's more than that. It's a triple times more, uh, more than PEM based system. It's about more than 700 plus nm cube per hour um, rate production capacity has been demonstrated globally uh, by adopting this alkaline based technology. But uh, in the both the cases, if you generate hydrogen, it has to be stored for uh, in a some particular pressure before it is going to use in fuel cell. So we need to have a, a, a external compressor to compress the produced hydrogen uh, and store it whenever uh, and store it and use it whenever you require. Uh, so in that case, this polymeritrate membrane based technology has giving some kind of it's giving some kind of advantage by eliminating the external compressor. Actually, the hydrogen which is produced at the cathode compartment in the polymer based technology is it self compressed. So when it, there are systems, commercial systems are available and uh, it uh, produce hydrogen at 50 to 30 bar. Even it nowadays it is people are demonstrating up to 100 bar capacity. So it is one of the uniqueness of uniqueness of this technology. And so the polymer membrane based technology can el directly eliminate the need of external compressor to compress the hydrogen. Uh, and whereas in the alkaline also the people have demonstrated the alkaline based, I mean uh, self pressurized alkaline based electrolysis system, but there are some kind of material limitation because people are using some kind of separator which may not withstand high, high, uh, uh, high pressure because you need to maintain the differential pressure in the system. So because if you see in most of the electroly global electrolysis system, the hydrogen will be produced at uh, some elevated pressure of 30 to 100 bar. But whereas the anode side, uh, the generated hydrogen is being let out as such to the atmosphere. But in few cases, uh, some of the manufacturers, they are uh, making the oxygen for medical grade oxygen because this hydrogen and oxygen is a highly pure and um, that oxygen is a medical grade oxygen and people are trying to place for uh, medical purpose. But that concept is uh, very, very less because when you want to handle the hydrogen oxygen at a uh, at a very high pressure in a single system, there may be a possibility for the explosion. So you need to be very careful in handling same pressure with a uh, in a single single system. So in that uh, context, the most of the uh, commercial system which are available is only pressurized at the hydrogen side, not at the oxygen side. So in that case, 
this polymerylene membrane based technology will withstand high temperature i'm sorry high pressure because of this high mechanical strength of this membrane which will withstand up to 100 bar pressure so that the hydrogen can be pressurized and it can be used for any other purpose whereas in the case of alkaline uh, uh, people are using only uh, 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 a separator as per the space kind of separators which may not have a high mechanical strength to withstand high pressure that's why uh, the development of high pressure electrolyzer using alkaline based system is not that mature but in the efficiency wise if you see that this polymerylene membrane based uh, electrolyzer technology has a higher efficiency uh, because uh, as i said uh, the hydrogen production rate only depends on the applied current actually so in the case of pm you can operate the system at a very high current of current or current density 1 ampere per cm squared that current density can be achievable in pem based technology whereas in the case of alkaline you cannot go beyond 400 milliamps per centimeter squared so and if we, even if you operate more than that there may be a, an electrode deteriorations electro, uh, so that kind of uh, uh, side reactions which may, will happen so that will reduce the overall efficiency of the system so that is the that's why and it when you adapts though it is a nickel it's a very cheaper material for um, making electrode and making uh, alkaline based system uh, if you want to meet out the requirement of hydrogen say for example you want 1000 meter cube per hour the number of cells and number of stack which you, we need to uh, put it in the plant will be more in the case of um, alkaline whereas in the same capacity if you want to meet out by polymerylene membrane based technology you don't want to uh, spend more amount on the capex so because the system is being operated high current density so you can considerably reduce the number of cell which is available in the stack can be reduced to generate the same amount of hydrogen so the efficiency wise the polymerylene membrane based technology is much efficient than alkaline based technology and uh, whenever you uh, you can when you consider so inverse some electrolysis technology for generation of hydrogen so these are the main factors which we need to consider the cost the main one and the purity of hydrogen especially for the pm fuel cell application the hydrogen purity is uh, uni- is, uh, uh, is most required one so the purity and the, as because which we are handling hydrogen and oxygen in the system so the safety is one of the uh, criteria which we need to consider when we are going to develop a uh, electrolysis water electrolysis based system and ultimately the cost of the system should be low but at the same time without sacrificing the durability of the system so these are the main factors which we need consider when you invest or when you develop any kind of electrolysis system so coming to the uh, alkaline based system as i said it require a uh, very cheap material uh, only nickel that can be used as a uh, electro i mean electrode and uh, uh, you can use asbestos based uh, separator as a to separate the gases which is produced at the anion cathode compartment and uh, uh, as i said the one of the drawbacks of the system is that the low specific production rate because of the lower operating current density which is about uh, 0.2 to 0.6 ampere per cm squared as i said 0.6 is very rare in most of the commercial system the operating current density is not more than 400 milliamps per cm squared and uh, and the diaphragm if often as per us so there is well cheap material and that can be used as a diaphragm material to separate the gas molecules and uh, uh, and uh, as i said to meet the uh, required amount of uh, hydrogen so uh, we need to uh, have a, a large number of system in order to meet the required hydrogen because which we uh, we are operating the system at lower current density that means lower production rate so in order to meet the required quantity of hydrogen we need to have a larger quantity of the system so it reflects in large system size uh, when you want to uh, implement in the power plant or any other sector actually so uh, so in order to overcome these issues there are uh, approaches currently is being adopted to minimize the uh, losses as well as to increase the efficiency of the system so that is a kind of a zero gap configurations because um, it's a typical light of polymerylene membrane based technology that now people are working on, working on developing a alkaline oh minus ion conducting membrane based Uh, electrolysis system so that you can considerably reduce the inter electrode distance so if you take any electrochemical system uh, as long as you reduce the inter electrode distance between anion and cathode we can considerably reduce the voltage loss 
So that is a basic concept of any electrochemical system. So when you are adopting this kind of membrane-based technology, you can considerably reduce the interelectrode distance between an anode and cathode. That will reflect in uh, uh, saving in voltage loss and you will end up with the energy loss. So with that kind of developing a zero cup cantification by adopting OH minus ion conducting um, membrane. So uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a recent development on this particular alkaline based system. And uh, I don't think so there are the commercial system which are available based on uh, AEM based uh, approach, but there are a lot of R&D efforts and uh, fruitfully is going on in this direction to develop a, a very good OH minus ion conducting electrolyte, uh, which will considerably reduce the Loss, voltage loss and higher energy requirement, uh, especially for this alkaline based electrolysis system. And, uh, and as I said uh, in the first slide, which we discussed, when you operate the electrolysis system at high temperature, you can considerably reduce the analytical energy input. So in that aspect, people are trying to uh, carry out this electrolysis process at high temperature, bit, little bit elevated temperature of 100 to 150 degrees Celsius, so that you can still uh, reduce the electrical energy input. So these are the new uh, attempt and approach has been um, has been taken uh, worldwide to reduce the uh, losses as well as the increase the efficiency of the alkaline based system. So uh, I, here I have tabulated some of the key manufacturers of alkaline based electrolysis system and under its performance. So if you see this, uh, most of the things, there is a kind of different configuration, monopolar or bipolar configurations, because the same side of, uh, I mean, uh, same electrodes, you, uh, uh, two, two side of, one side of the electrode will act as an anode, another side will act as a cathode. So that kind of, most of the manufacturers are adopting this bipolar configuration so that they can make the system very compact. And there are a few people uh, still there uh, working on developing a monopolar based system, uh, which may have some kind of uh, advantage and you can eliminate the um, uh, gas uh, recombination, I mean gas mixing of hydrogen and oxygen. So uh, when you go with the bonopolar configuration, uh, there may not be a direct mixing of hydrogen and oxygen. The chances are very less. When you go with bipolar kind of configuration, there may be a possibility for the gas mixing of hydrogen and oxygen. So, but it, the technology has been uh, matured and most of the manufacturer are adopting bipolar configuration with a rated capacity of ranging from one to 100 to 500 meter cube per hour. And in if you see in uh, all these cases, the energy consumption vary from four to seven kilowatt hour per meter cube. So this is what I've discussed in my earlier slide. So the amount of energy which you need to spend to produce one meter cube of hydrogen based on this alkaline or uh, acid based system, you, the electricity which you want to spend it is six to seven unit of electricity. Uh, um, based on my practical experience, uh, uh, which we encountered during my uh, career, actually, though it is uh, energy consumption of the uh, electrolysis stack and system, but there are other BOP components, the energy consumption, uh, especially for the dryer. So because the hydrogen which is coming out from the electrolysis are high humid. So that, that is suitable for fuel cell. We can directly use it for humidified hydrogen gas for the fuel cell, but uh, it should be a kind of on-site generation and on-site utilization. In that concept and in between you need to have some kind of pressurization also. So, and if you want to store it and use it whenever you require, you have to dehumidify the, you have to dry the hydrogen and you have to dehumidify the hydrogen and store it as a dry hydrogen in the cylinders and use it for the fuel cell. So in that case, you have to consider all the uh, energy requirement of the BOP common, especially dryer, gas conditioning system. So in that, all that case, in overall energy consumption, so the, as a system, it's about eight to nine kilowatt hour per meter cube of hydrogen actually. So that's why the practical case, but if you as far as the stack concern is that it's range from five to four to seven kilowatt hour per meter cube at a pressure ranges from one to uh, 10 bar, that is the maximum. And uh, there are few demonstration has been carried out by, with the monopolar configuration at 448, but I'm not sure by how much it's reliable. And uh, if you see in all these cases, the maximum pressure which we can able to attain not more than 30 bar. Uh, mostly Europe and uh, US based uh, system, I mean US based companies are playing in this particular technology. So in this context, when I was in Secre, so we developed uh, some kind of a high surface area nickel um, by uh, adopting nickel zinc alloy. So we, which we are creating by electro deposition method and leaching out the uh, nick, uh, nick zinc 
from the nickel zinc uh, alloy you can get high porous uh, high surface area nickel so that was the concept based on that concept uh, we started in a smaller area and which has been scaled up up to uh, 6 meter squared uh, electrode area uh, so that has been tested by the industry partner and finally the technology has been transferred to the uh, industry of eastern electrolysis in a uh, new delhi so because the basic concept is that uh, uh, the electrochemical performance of the any system it depends on the kind of electrode material and its surface properties so in that logic and we approach this uh, developing a nickel zinc alloy uh, by leaching out the zinc you can get high porous nickel and high surface area nickel which is suitable uh, for uh, gas evolutions uh, and we, we have also introduced some kind of sulfur Uh, which will reduce the surface tension of the gas bubbles which will form during electrolysis process so it will allow the easy escape of a uh, gas molecule uh, which will not get absorbed and it it will not get blocked on the surface of the electrode material so uh, this kind of uh, configuration nickel zinc sulfur based uh, alloy configuration we developed a electrode material so that has been scaled up to 6 meter squared electrode area and that has been technology was transferred successfully for the commercial application so uh, so that's all in alkaline based uh, system uh, so in order to uh, uh, overcome the uh, mm, <clears throat> now to overcome the technological challenges and as well as the reduced uh, i mean to increase the efficiency of the system uh, it's a kind of comparison with the pem alkaline as well as pem based system uh, so as i said we have, we need to use some kind of caustic soda uh, in the liquid system in the case of alkaline whereas in the case of pem we don't want to handle any acidic or alkaline environment so we can feed only pure water and the membrane will take care of all the ionic uh, conductivity and the pressure as i said the hydrogen can be pressured at pressurized maximum of 300 bar or 160 to 150 bar whereas in the case of a uh, alkaline based system we have to maintain the balanced pressure that's what we discuss because the differential pressure will not be possible in the case of alkaline because you need to pressurize both hydrogen and oxygen simultaneously whereas in the case of pem based technology you can maintain a differential pressure in the system so that you can comfortably reduce uh, release hydrogen at a elevated pressure so that one advantage which we have in compare with alkaline based system and the only possible impurity of significance is is in product water whereas in the case of alkaline because we are handling caustic soda and all those things so the inclusion of impurities in the electrolyte is chances are more and um, and the current density base if you see the operating current density is bit high for the pem based technology than alkaline based technology so coming to this uh, pem based technology is a this is uh, is a very simple uh, reaction uh, and electrode electrolyte configurations Uh, because uh, by adopting this polymeritrate membrane based technology we, we are considerably reduce the um, uh, inter electrode distance so that we have increased the operating current of the system which will in- reflect in higher energy high, lower energy consumption and uh, lower uh, 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 lo- voltage losses actually so these are the core components of a uh, um, uh, polymeritrate membrane based um, core component of the sorry core component of a pem based technology uh, uh, so in this um, yeah so if you see this the membrane is a hard uh, uh, it's a heart of the mem- uh, pem based technology and on two side of the membrane the catalyst is being coated and uh, Uh, you, it's a it's a kind of ga- not gas diffusion layer. It's a basically a current collector. Uh, in the case of PEM based electrolysis system, mostly the titanium mesh and titanium sintered uh, disc is being used as the um, current distributor or current collector. Uh, so, which is has to be uh, placed adjacent to the uh, membrane electrode assembly. And in order to facilitate the gas and the reactant distribution uh, over the catalyst uh, surface, we need to have a some kind of patterned flow field. a plate and uh, that has to be uh, uh, assembled using tie rods to make a single polymer electrolyte membrane based electrolysis system so uh, uh, so here uh, one of the uh, advantage i mean advantage uh, one of the reason for increasing the cost of the pem based technology is that because the operating so unlike fuel cell we can use any graphite carbon based material for the cell construction 
whereas in the case of uh, though it is a reverse of the fuel cell you cannot use uh, any carbon based material for the cell construction because as i said the amount of voltage requirement to split the water molecule is about uh, practically in case is about 1.622 volt whereas in the case of fuel cell the operating voltage not will not go more than 0.621 volt actually so now though it is a open circuit potential is 1 volt for the pm fuel cell uh, practical case the it uh, when you operate the system at uh, 50% or uh, 45 to 50% efficiency the operating cell voltage will be about 0.6 to 0.7 volt actually per cell so in that case the carbon corrosion is one of the phenomena will is not possible in the case of operating the uh, system at lower voltage whereas in the case of electrolysis uh, in both the cases uh, in both side actually so i think you can use carbon some of the carbon based carbon supported catalyst and uh, Uh, carbon flow field paid at the cathode but in the case of anode side you cannot able to use any carbon based material so because the operating voltage is bit high 1.6 volt so in that uh, potential in the aqueous medium i mean in this acidic medium the carbon will undergo easily corrosion so in order to avoid the carbon corrosions we, we must use uh, non carbon based material especially titanium so which is being widely used for the cell construction so though if you are using titanium for flow field paid and current collectors so it has a tendency to get oxidized during electrolysis process so that may increase the overall cell potential and it may lead to voltage loss further so in order to avoid such kind of a, uh, uh, phenomena so we need to platinize the uh, plat uh, titanium mesh as well as the titanium flow field plates so these are the reason to make the system uh, not cost effective so but we need to uh, do otherwise the end life i mean the shelf i mean the durability of the system will be the question mark so yeah, so when you see this uh, selection of the catalyst especially for the pem based technology uh, uh, so these are the factors which we need to consider it should be electrically conductive and it should high electrocatalytic activity it should be have a high electrocatalytic activity in the case of hydrogen evolution as well as oxygen evolution reaction and high surface area and uh, uh, low the cost as, uh, uh, obviously the cost should be minimum so but as i said the hydrogen side you can use some supporter and unsupported platinum so it ranges from, because the uh, most of the losses will occur at the anode side not at the cathode side uh, that's why you can uh, reduce the amount of noble metal catalyst at the cathode side considerably that uh, you can reduce whereas in the oxygen side you cannot use any carbon supporter because it will undergo corrosions so you must use unsupported iridium or ruthenium based oxides so because um, you cannot use a platinum platinum as a, uh, catalyst on both side and unlike fuel cells like fuel cell fuel cell you can use in a carbon supported platinum on both side whereas in the case of electrolyzer you cannot use carbon supported electro catalyst at anode side because of the carbon corrosion and you cannot use in a pure metal also because when you do this kind of oxygen evolution reaction the metal may have a tendency to react with oxygen to will form a uh, metal oxide further so in order to avoid such kind of complication if you use high conductive electrically conductive metal noble metal oxide especially iridium oxide and ruthenium oxide these are have a good electrical conductivity but at the same good stability because this metal is already oxidized in the form of plus 2 or plus 4 so it will not undergo further oxidation with the oxygen which is produced at the anode compartment so that's why it is it is preferred to use metal oxide based electro catalyst of the anode side and it should not it should not be a supported by a carbon also so so that is the reason people are using an unsupported um, electro catalyst for the oxygen evolution reactions and supported catalyst for the hydrogen evolution reaction because the hydrogen evolution will take place at zero volt in that case you, there may not be a possibility for the carbon corrosion so in that angle you can use a carbon supported electro catalyst for the cathode side and non unsupported catalyst for the anode side so when you uh, so do selection of this electro catalyst for hydrogen evolution reactions uh the main factor which we need to consider is uh, uh, so if you see this uh, diagram the metal hydrogen bond is one of the determining factors uh, because the uh, the the bond the band bond 
energy between metal and hydrogen should be kind of optimum so it should not get absorbed more on the metal surface but at the same time it should not easily detach from the metal so it kind of um, optimum um, binding energy between and metal and hydrogen so in that case so platinum is the best metal for the hydrogen evolution reactions and um, so uh, as is the best catalytic catalyst for the hgr reactions and uh, uh, the metals of intermediate the bond strength the, that's what i we discussed the metals of intermediate bond strength energy are the most active towards hydrogen evolution reaction that is noble metal for the metal, metals of low bond strength and high bond strength hydrogen desorption steps become the rate determining so it should it be kind of optimum the bond uh, making and bond dissociation energy of metal and hydrogen should be in optimum so in that category platinum and palladium are the good electro catalysts for hydrogen evolution reactions but in the case of supporting material apart from the carbon um, there are uh, carbon blacks with the carbon nanotubes and graphene which are, which are also coming emerging up um, so uh, emerging alternative uh, carbon support for the hydrogen evolution reaction um, but um, <clears throat> there are a few other catalysts the nickel cobalt iron uh, and copper is also being used as hydrogen evolution reaction catalyst but though it is a stable though it is give a uh, on par performance with the noble metal electro catalyst the stability of the catalyst over period of time in acidic medium uh, uh, is question mark so that's why uh, people if you want to make a kind of system uh, with a non noble metal based electro catalyst may not have a high Uh, stability so it has giving on par performance with the uh, platinum based things uh, uh, but in the durability is the question mark so coming to the selection of anode electro catalyst for the oxygen evolution as i said uh, the most of the over potential is being about 40% of the over potential losses are occurring at the anode side especially in the pem based technology not at the cathode side so we have to care we have to take utmost care when you are selecting the Uh, anode electro catalyst for the oxygen evolutions so these are the general mechanism which are um, most of the electro catalyst are following and if you say the oxide formation the metal should not be in a position to form a oxides uh, and it should be in a position to uh, increase the uh, kinetics of this intermediate step to evolve free oxygen actually so uh, like so it should so that's why it is better to prefer metal oxide than metal in the initial stage itself so if you see the electro catalytic activity range of this oer in the case of ruthenium oxide is better but though it is ruthenium oxide is better than iridium oxide people will not use ruthenium oxide as a alone for the uh, anode electro catalyst because ruthenium though it, it is in plus 4 oxidation state now it is in plus 4 ruthenium oxide is plus 4 oxidation state when you increase the uh, when you operate the system at high potential the ruthenium has the tendency to go further oxidation state of plus 4 to up to plus 8 so so over period of time so the ruthenium may also though you are using ruthenium oxide over period of time it has a tendency to undergo further oxidation and lead to ruthenium leaching from the electro catalyst so that's why it is not advisable to use uh, ruthenium oxide alone though it has a very good anodic electro catalytic activity for the oxygen evolution people will prefer only iridium oxide because iridium does not have a tendency to further undergo the oxidation more than plus, plus 4 state and it will be stable even if operated at higher voltage or higher current density so that's why iridium oxide is a preferred electro catalyst for the oxygen evolution and in some few cases in order to increase the efficiency for them and if you are uh, confident with the operating voltage lower than 1.8 volt per cell you can go with ruthenium oxide by electro catalyst but it is advisable to use a mixer of ruthenium oxide and iridium oxide and you will end up with a very good uh, uh, energy very good uh, lower very good voltage loss uh, in in anode side um, so uh, these are the factors ba- band structure bond strength and number of d electrons so these are the factors which will in- influence the steps of electron transfer and adsorb and desorption species actually so we, these are the factors which we need to consider while selecting the oxygen evolution catalyst for the uh, um, <clears throat> uh, oxygen evolution actually so uh, though we, if we are using in, because the iridium oxide and ruthenium oxide is on for 
costly with platinum based catalyst so now people are trying to use some kind of a, a non carbon support in order to reduce the uh, act, uh, noble metal content in the anode side as well as to increase the uh, surface area as well as the efficiency of the electro anode electro catalyst so in that context um, um, uh, titanium carbide titanium oxide which are being used as the non carbon uh, electro catalyst support for oxygen evolution reaction so uh, coming to the another core component of the uh, pem based water based technology is the membrane uh, which are similar to the fuel cell membrane uh, i think you might have uh, uh, heard about the detailed uh, presentation on this particular topic the development of uh, polymer chain membrane for the fuel cell but in this case of uh, electrolyzer electrolyzer also this uh, we are using the nafian based perfluorosulfonic acid nafian based membrane but uh, when compared with the fuel cell uh, the thickness of the nafian membrane for the electrolysis process should be higher so normally the nafian 117 that is uh, 7 mil thickness about 175 to 200 micron thickness is being widely used for the uh, electrolysis process uh, because it need to withstand some high pressure of 100 bar when you are operating the system at differential pressure so it is better to go with a thicker membrane of higher cap uh, micron thickness ranging from 150 to 175 micron and uh, it is quite stable throughout the operation of the time so apart from the uh, nafian there are many r&d program is going on on developing a composite and alternative to the nafian based material and uh, by adding some kind of inorganic oxides so that um, you can retain the uh, protonic conductivity of a, a membrane like nafian by including silicon dioxide titanium dioxide because this has a tendency to absorb the water molecules and it can retain the membrane conductivity as equal to nafian so these are some of the approach uh, it's being adopted to develop a non nafian based membrane especially for the electrolysis process and when you when you when you add this kind of uh, metal oxides uh, in the membrane to develop a composites membrane it also has a benefit to operate the system at high temperature of 120 to 130 degrees celsius more than 100 degrees celsius so in that case in that case it 